Hey everybody, Courtney Smith here with our December 5th edition of Wall Street Winners. So excited to be here. Let's dive right in. That's our logo. And here we are. Disclaimer, that's important. Now, we still, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through a series of things that I'm going to say. This is bullish, but, and there's quite a few charts that have the but in them. So I started showing this one too a couple of weeks ago. The price action is clearly bullish. I mean, we made new multi-month highs this week. But the purple predictor is going down. In other words, the smart money is selling this rally. Not buying it, selling it. And that makes me very nervous because when you see a divergence between the smart money and the price action, you, you know, look, you don't, the smart money is not always right. But they're like 90% right. So this makes me very nervous. So bull market, but Dow Jones breaks to new. I mean, these are the highest prices we've seen since April. So the Dow is leading on the upside, no question about it. But look in the upper right hand corner. Notice how the little red line, that selling pressure is slowly creeping higher. Now buying pressure staying high. But once again, if selling pressure is going up, that means that it could be people are taking profits, most likely, uh, could be new shorts, but most likely it's people taking profits. So once again, bull market, but what about the NASDAQ? similar to the S&P bull market, but so here we just barely broke to new high move. So this is the highest close we've had since September. Pretty good price action, but look at the purple predictor going sideways. Now it's not going down the way the S&P is. And this is why I think we're getting ready to have the NASDAQ outperform the Dow. Now, we're not there yet, but I think by the time we get to January, we're going to start seeing signs like that. Now, of course, you're writing these down. Check me out. See if my predictions are accurate or not. You always want all of your advisors to be accountable. Not perfect. Nobody's perfect, but you want them accountable. IWM. We got up close came down, got right to the breakout level, came down, got right to the breakout level. But over here, IWM, which is the Russell 2000, look at the purple predictor is screaming. So in other words, the smart money is selling the mega caps and buying the small caps. Now, once again, we got to be, we want to be doing what the smart money is doing. Now, I want to break out on the IWM first. I don't want to just buy it because the smart money's buying because they do make the occasional mistake. But nonetheless, as soon as we break above this, which I don't think it's now, I don't think it's going to be this week because there's too many butts. OK, but and, and I still got a couple more butts to go. But nonetheless, if we can close above this blue line, our seasonality indicator will shift to bullish, which means we're going to start to take extra large positions, 50 or 100 percent larger positions. OK, on any new trades, not old trades, new trades. And right here, I said to you a minute, a few minutes ago that I think we're going to start seeing the small caps outperform the mega caps. This chart is one reason why I believe that the smart money is piling in to those small caps. Uh, seasonality. Now, you can see we're obviously still in a very strong seasonality, and that strong seasonality goes all the way, most of the way through next year. But notice we have a little bit of a dip in here. Now, so let's go back to those butts, shall we? So those butts, none of those butts are telling me that we're peaking and going to make into a big bear market again. Not at all. All they're saying is we might get a one week dip against the clear bull trend. The seasonality says that dip should come up, if not this week, then next week. Sounds perfect. All of those butts line up to tell me we're going to have a little bit of a dip in the market. The seasonality says not this week, next week. Sounds about right to me. Now, this is another interesting thing. Money's going out of the stock market and into bonds. Bonds were stronger than stocks this week. 
And you can see why. The stock market guys, now remember the stock market guys have been going in, we're going to look at the risk decator here in a second. Well, let's look at it now. The risk decator still very weak, very weak, popped up a little bit, but not much. Now let's go back, look, sorry. Now let's go back to asset allocation. And here you can see they took money out of the stock market to put it into bonds. Now, if you put money from stocks to bonds, it means you want less risk. Because with bonds, we always know they're going to mature at 100. So at least we know treasury bonds are going to do that. We don't know if corporate bonds are going to do that or muni bonds or state bonds. But we know treasury bonds are going to always mature at 100. So there's no risk in them. There's no credit risk in them. And if we hold to maturity, there's no price risk in them either. So we look at this and we say, OK, they moved out of stocks into the less risky bonds. Now, I also think that they're moving into the bond market because they think that the bond market has gone about as far as it can in terms of yield and yields are going to be coming down. So they better lock in those high rates while they can. I think that's what's going on. Now, we see a little bit of reaching for some risk here, but not significant to really change my mind on the attitude. This has been one of the leaders. The idea now is, is that the ECB has come out and they've said very clearly that they have to play catch up with the Fed. The Fed was the leader in monetary tightening. Now, uh, Chairman Powell came out this last week and he basically said, we're going to slow this down. We're going to slow it down. No need to keep going up three quarters. We're going to do some halves. Oh, shoot. You know, just relax is what he said. So the stock market takes off. Uh, global shares. Uh, now, over in Europe, Christine Lagarde, the head of the ECB, has been saying we got to play catch up. We have to get more aggressive against inflation. So that's leading more money to leave the American stock market and move to Europe and support the euro, the Swiss, the pound against the dollar. So that's what's going on. Now you know. Yield curve in the U.S. is getting even more negative. The, what does this mean? It means that the recession that we've already had, we had two, two, two quarters of neg. Now we had one positive, but next year we're going to have a double dip recession and it's going to last for a long time. We could see three quarters, four quarters of recession next year. Now, you've never heard that before, but this is going to be a double dip recession. Now, here's that strength in bonds. And you can see the purple predictor shows that the smart money is buying bonds. And they're putting those bonds in bushel baskets and putting them in their basement. Yes, I swear to God, that's what that's what they're doing. They just there's no more room in their safety deposit box. So they're putting them in their basement. Bond key factors. We went over that in detail last week. Dollar week, just as I've been telling you now for a couple of months. Really, we're early in on this market. It's really, you got you got to you got to subscribe so you know what's really going on in the world. Everybody else is full of. Oh, anyway, I don't want to rag on other people, but here we go. Gold breaking out as I told you would. If the dollar's weak, gold is going to be strong. Period. Gold key indicators. Now this one's neutral. This is the CRB, but the euro is strong. The yen is even stronger. So look how strong our two bullish factors are, and then we have one negative. So yes, it's only two bullish, but those bullish factors are very bullish. It's like this should be two plus plus plus. All right, crude oil got a little bit of a bounce, but we're making lower lows. So I think we're going to continue to sag back down. I'm not really playing the energy markets right now. Like, for example, here, here's the purple predictor. So the smart money bought the dip. Well, I don't like fading the smart money. They're smart money because they're, uh, uh, oh, that's right, they're smart. So if they're smart and, and I'm not that bright, then I should probably be paying attention to what they're doing. Now, Bitcoin got a little bit of a rally, but I, I'm more and more thinking this is unsustainable. We're ju I think the market's being manipulated at these prices for the simple reason I want you to think for a second. Now, I can't prove that it's manipulated, so don't listen to me. But here's my reasoning. We've just gone through the, I believe, the biggest bear market in Bitcoin. If it's not the biggest, it's the second biggest. But this one was far more important than previous bear markets for the simple reason that 
we had all the FOMO crowd buying Bitcoin. Most of those people have lost money now. Okay, most people who have bought Bitcoin are losing money, about two thirds, and they're going to slowly get rid of them. That that massive amount of the FOMO late to the party buyers, every time the price goes up, they're going to sell it in order to, oh, thank God, I got back to break even. I'm going to get out now. So there's a massive amount of resistance above this market. So you got to ask yourself, well, what's going to cause there to be new buying? Well, Fed easing. Fed easing could cause new buying, but so far it hasn't. It's, it's sort of stalled the down move, the idea that there's going to be Fed easing. But the reason why I say I think it's manipulated is because look at all the collapses that we've seen recently. Obviously, FTX is the headline. But we've seen BlockFi. I mean, it just goes on and on. And we're not through with the bankruptcies. So now if I was about to go bankrupt because my collateral, which is Bitcoin or Ethereum or Solana or FTT or Tether or any other garbage coins, if my collateral is one of those, I better keep that collateral up so that I don't have to declare bankruptcy. So I think that there's some buying of crypto to try to stop more bankruptcies in the marketplace. I wouldn't be surprised if the head of Binance is in there trying to support the market, to support his clients, but more importantly, support his his and other people's uh, balance sheet. Because if all these companies keep going bankrupt, Binance will probably survive, but it won't be pretty for him. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks, Freebies. You know what to do. Hey everybody, Courtney Smith here, and I just wanted to kind of reveal with you one of my secrets of my success, and that is I use a website called stockbutler.com, stockbutler.com. And the reason I use it is because it saves me so much incredible time, and it was based on my forms of analysis. The Stock Butler was developed by one of my brilliant students. Of course, all my students are brilliant. You know that. And uh, he designed it around my technique for selecting, for fundamentally selecting stocks. So all you have to do is you come here, you go to rate, you go to best of the best. That's the name of the technique. And bingo, there's the list. And then since there's only four stocks there, no problem. Go up to rate, go down here to advanced stock list. I usually change this to main e table, update the list, <clears throat> anything in green, I'm interested in. Now I know that these are fundamentally powerful stocks. Now all I have to do is go find the correct technical entry and exit point. So Stock Butler saves me a tremendous amount of time, keeps me focused on only the best of the best stocks instead of wasting my time on other garbage. All right, everybody. We'll see you later.